In this video, I'm going to show you how you can finally get high quality leads with Facebook ads and walk you through step by step how to build your first lead generation campaign. I personally spend millions of dollars on Facebook ads and have generated thousands upon thousands of high quality leads for my business partners and various product lines. So I can guarantee you that the strategies that we'll be discussing in this video are tried and true, and they can 100% work for you no matter your business size. But let's hop over to the ads manager to get started. Okay, so now you can see that we are in the ads manager. Now, if you've never been in a ad manager before, it's pretty much broken out by the campaign level, your ad set level, which is really like your targeting, and then your actual ads, which is the creatives that people see, okay? Very simple, very straightforward. Now, if this is your first time running ads, I do recommend that you make sure that you set up your Facebook ad pixel and Cappy or conversion API. You definitely wanna set this up because your tracking is super, super important for your success with Facebook ads, okay? So before you do anything else, make sure that you set this up. I have videos that walk you through how to set up your Facebook pixel properly, um, you know, and connect it to your CRM or website or, you know, whatever you need to connect it to but you definitely wanna set up your Facebook pixel because data tracking um, and machine learning is extremely vital to your success when it comes to Facebook ads. So make sure that you do that before you do anything else, okay? But if you do already have that set up, what you're gonna to wanna to do is select create, and then you're gonna see these campaign objectives, okay? There's gonna be awareness, traffic, engagement, leads, app promotion, sales, um, and there are really two really good ways to run lead generation campaigns, okay? Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to run them utilizing Facebook's new instant form process. Um, but you can you know, run leads to your website, to a landing page, and I'll kind of discuss the differences between the two. But as of right now, what you're gonna wanna do is select this leads campaign objective press continue, and then you're gonna see where you can name your campaign. Since this is just a test campaign, I'm just gonna leave this alone, um, but you definitely wanna make sure that you properly name your campaigns. You know, when you start getting a super uh, crowded campaign uh, ads manager, you're definitely gonna wanna be able to find your campaigns easy. And so making sure that you name them properly just makes it easier for you organizational rise, okay? And then um, you probably are not gonna need to touch special ad categories. You're only gonna touch this if you're in one of these like social issues, housing, employment, credit, stuff like that. So if you do have a credit business or if you're doing employment businesses or housing or stuff like that, then you know, you definitely wanna use these categories, but the average service-based business or person, or person generating leads or business generating leads is not gonna really need this, right? You're not gonna check A-B testing you are gonna wanna use Advantage Campaign Budget. Pretty much this replace Campaign Budget Optimization or CBO, right? And all this really means is that, you know, Facebook is gonna optimize your campaign for you and spend money on whatever ad set is performing the best, okay? Because you can have several ad sets under one campaign and I recommend having more than one ad set under one campaign. And so pretty much it's gonna optimize your budget accordingly and only spend on the ad sets that are performing the best, okay? So it allows you to do testing all within one campaign and you don't have to break it out, okay? And then here um, you can set your daily budget or lifetime budget. Um, you know, I've used both. This doesn't really matter. So, you know, you can do daily budgeting if you'd like. If you already have a lifetime budget or how long you know you want to run a campaign for, you can set that. Most of the time I set it monthly. So I have a lifetime budget. Let's just say I want to spend 100,000 in a month. I just set it to 100,000 and boom, that's it, okay? And so that's it from the campaign level. You're going to hit next. Okay, now we're at the ad set level. You also wanna name your ad set. Again, 
um, naming conventions are important just so you know which ad set is what. And as you can see, you can generate leads through your website. You can use instant forms. You can use messenger, instant forms and messengers, call, app. Um, and as I was saying before, you can still run and generate leads from your website, right? But I wouldn't actually use the lead conversion. I would just use the regular um, conversion objective. You might have seen it and might have said sales. If you're in the new ads manager, if you have an old ad manager, it'll say conversions. Same thing, just different name. I wouldn't use leads. For whatever reason, I just found conversion campaigns run better when you're trying to run, you know, and get leads from your website, right? But if you're trying to generate leads through Facebook, use lead forms. Again, they both work but I think instant forms is a little bit easier to run when you're newer to Facebook ads, okay? And so what you're gonna wanna do is select instant forms, scroll down, they'll probably have you accept this meta lead ads term agreement. Um, then if you wanna select a catalog, you can. So if you have uh, a service-based business where you have different products and catalogs, you can, but for most service-based businesses, you're not gonna wanna um, select that and then it's going to show you what you want to optimize for you definitely want to optimize towards leads um, you can optimize for conversion leads um, but I just use leads because um, you're definitely trying to get the most leads possible and I'll show you how you can qualify these leads a little bit better um, but I always just use leads you can test this to see if this works better for you I found regular leads works just fine, but this is something you can test if you like. So use leads, set your start date, your end date if you are running lifetime budgets. So you definitely want to set that. Um, and then here you'll get to your audience section. Okay. And so this is very, very important that you definitely want to select you know, a high quality audience, okay? Now, if you don't know what custom audience means, essentially, Facebook allows you to create custom audiences based on people that have interacted with your Facebook or Instagram page, people that have interacted with your website, you know, people that are already leads, you can upload your current customer list, okay? So a couple audiences that I would definitely test out if you already been getting leads for your business is creating lookalike audiences based on your current customer list. So upload your, you know, CSV file, right? That has all your emails, upload it to Facebook and then create a lookalike audience off of that. And it's actually very, very easy to do. So if you hit create custom audience, you can select that. And as you can see, you can you know upload your customer list, you can upload your Instagram account, you can create a lookalike audience off your website visitors, you can create a lookalike audiences off you know your previous lead form. So if you've already run lead form ads before, right? Or after you create this ad, you know, it performs well, you can create an audience off this ad and then create a lookalike audience off of that, right? So there's a lot of things that you can play with to get better performing and better qualified target audience. So this is where I would start if you already have that data. If you don't have that data, then what you're gonna wanna do is do some broad interest targeting, okay? And this is where you can select your location. So I'm based in the United States. You can use United States, right? Simple. I always recommend just using the country that you're in. But if you do have, you know, or want to target people that are outside of your home country, you can 100% do that. All you have to do is select edit and then type in the country you want to target. So United Kingdom, right? The UK. Boom, I can target the UK. So I will say if you don't have a very big budget, then keep it, you know, within your state, right? If you have a local service business, then just use your state or city. Um, now, if you're global, right, or you can do country ride, then obviously you can just use United States or, you know, put in the countries you want to target. But if your budget isn't really big um, or large, then just stick with your city or state and then work from there. 
And then you want to put in your age demographic, your gender, you know, if you only serve women or men. And then here you can go into your interest based targeting. Okay. Now I will say that uh, Facebook has updated some demographics for you um, and behaviors and interests. Now I do want to let you know that Facebook has notoriously not been great for B2B, but now they have updated some of their targeting also, right? So if you go down to work, you see that drop down, you can do employers, you can do industries. And you can now target large business and business enterprise employees, 500 plus, um, all these different industries you can go after, right? You can do medium sized businesses, sales, small businesses that only have 10 to 200 employees, right? So they have updated a lot of their industries to help people in the B2B space. So these are, you know, businesses that you can go after, you know, for your targeting, which is really, really good. Okay. And then moving on, once you select your targeting, um, you do have advanced detail targeting. I wouldn't recommend using that. I would leave languages. And then if you want to save this audience for later, the target for later, you can, and then you have your placements. So, um, there are times to where you can run automatic placements. I like to use manual placements, right? But I would recommend using at least six placements. I found six placements is kind of like that sweet spot for, you know, uh, lead ads. So of course you want to run on all the feeds, um, you know, stories. I would never run on Instagram reels. It never works. Um, articles, not so much. You want to turn off app websites, right? So you want to really stick to the main feeds, um, you know, to run these ads. Okay. But I would use at least six placements because uh, I found that those work the best. But I would test automatic placements and manual placements to see which one works best for you. But you know, I found that again, running six placements or more has worked the best for, you know, lead ads. Okay. And then moving on, you want to select next and then again, name your creative. Then here you can select your Facebook page or Instagram ad account or Instagram account. Excuse me. Select that. Boom. And this is where you're going to create your ad. You can run a single image ad, carousel ad. Um, I found that running either a sing single image or video ad, 15 second ad has performed the best. I do want to let you know that your creative definitely needs to be specific to what you're offering in your service. It needs to be extremely clear what you want and what action you want your potential lead to take. Okay. And so whether you want them to fill out a form to contact you, um, whether you're going to call them, right. It needs to be clear what you're offering, what your service is. And if you're running video ads, it needs to be 15 seconds. And your first three seconds of your ad has to have a very strong hook to get them to stop the scroll, okay? Those are things that people say all the time. Or if you're running a single image ad, right? It needs to make sure that you have a clear value proposition. What are you offering and why and what value are you bringing to them, okay? Simple stuff. You've heard it all the time, but the fundamentals are so important and <laughs> you'll be surprised how many people just don't get the fundamentals right. It sounds simple, it sounds easy, but a lot of people get it wrong, okay? And so pretty much this is where you upload your creative here. And then as you scroll down, you can type in your primary text, right? What headline you wanna use, how you wanna describe, right? and then your call to action. Learn more has done well for me. Get a quote has done well, depending on the service-based business um, that you're running, right? But if all else fails, just use learn more. And then here is where you wanna create your form, 
okay? And we're gonna walk you through, I'm gonna walk you through that process, okay? So you can see what the form will look like. You can name your form, right? And then you have your intro, and this is where you can select what your image looks like. You can either upload an image or you can just use the same image that you're using for your ad. Um, very straightforward. And then here for your ad headline, you wanna make sure that you have a clear call to action. What, you know, do you want people to do in this form? You feel me? Um, so you wanna make sure you have a clear call to action here, completing the form. And then any little details, you know, whether you're gonna call them within 24 hours, eight hours, you know, et cetera. And then here for your questions, this is where it kind of gets dicey a little bit, depending on, you know, what are your objectives? The, you know, least amount of questions will help with getting more leads, but the more questions that you ask, the higher quality the leads will be. Because I think once you go over uh, four questions, like <laughs> people start to drop off significantly Right, so if you want higher quality leads, then definitely ask more questions, but don't ask, you know, any questions that aren't needed. So name, email, phone number, right? If you need an address for legal purposes, then do that, but don't do anything that is more than necessary, okay? And then once you do get these leads, right, you wanna make sure that you contact them within 24 hours. The longer that you wait to contact your leads, the worse off you will be, okay? But that is this section. This is just the contact information. And then you can add, you know, different categories, reform, date of birth, mail status, work information, job title, etc. So however you wanna qualify your leads, definitely do that. Then as you can see here, you can add a privacy policy, right? And link to it. Most people have a privacy policy I would recommend having, um, and you need to include a link to your company's policy po privacy policy. It's very, very important. So make sure that you add that. Um, and then any disclaimers that you need. And then this is a message for your lead. So this is the last step in the lead process. Then, you know, once it's complete, you can either send them to your website, add a clear, you know, call to action. Once they click it, you know, they go to your website and boom, you've created your first lead form. And then here, you can also set up your CRM. So if you're using Salesforce or something like that, you can set it up so it automatically downloads into your database and tracks, which is super dope. You also wanna make sure that you have your pixel set up, like I said in the beginning, because this is going to track that and any offline events that you may wanna set up, you can. That's a little bit more advanced. Um, but that pretty much completes you you know, setting up your first lead generation ad campaign, okay? Now, if you got value out of this video, make sure that you like and subscribe because I create tutorials like this all the time. And if you have any questions, make sure that you comment them down below. I try to answer every question that I get. But until next time, be easy.